So they need more than two thirds to be approved. Two thirds of the votes cast to be yes in order to be approved. So first, going into P18, please find it in your binder, P18, and read it, go through it now. This is a proposal to remove inconsistencies in the references from committee regulations, because references were outdated and no longer valid. For example, in this document, there was reference in Article 4 of committee internal regulations, but this Article 4 was different in each committee internal regulations. So it was not corresponding to the reference. More explicitly, these changes no. Peter, can you help me? You will see here the text that is also in your proposals. You see that we replace the Article 4 of the internal regulations of the committee by reference that is relevant to the internal regulations. This is a completely technical proposal, and all the references were replaced by the relevant reference. So no numbers, because these were changed without updating the other document, and we, were, we uh, refer now to the, the content. First change is this. Then the same with Article 2.1. Again with Article 2. Article 3.1. 3.2. And that is all. This is a completely technical proposal. There is no change in the meaning of the regulations. It's just a change in the references. Just to be consistent, just to find consistency between the two documents. Are there any questions? Question from Reykjavik. I'm Daniel from Reykjavik. I was just wondering if it wouldn't be uh, useful to use the VIP to uh, work with these proposals, because uh, it sounds it's just like a technical proposal, so we could maybe skip it, skip doing it in the GMs and use the time for something else instead. Well, we worked on that in the summer, so it was ready just in uh, just in time for PM. And since we were changing also other things in committee regulations, we decided to put them together and have a block of uh, proposals about committee regulations. Questions? Okay. So, um, as you can see, this is really technical proposal. So let's go for the next one. Uh, just bear with me. It's only one more proposal. Five more minutes of your attention. Okay, so proposal 20 is dealing about the membership in committee. Um, we also noticed that committee regulations is no longer representing the current membership on committees. So uh, these are the changes that we are proposing. When um, it, the current version talks about two membership levels, uh, usually baby members and full members, but uh, most committees uh, also have something, um, have trainee, uh, or different other, so we consider that at least these two members, two membership levels should be uh, existing, though it shouldn't be restrictive. Okay. Now, for you to understand this kind of proposals, um, for example, uh, with the current um, situation, you have these two membership, you have baby and full, and they can be subdivided. Well, actually, it's not really happening like that because it may happen that a trainee is not yet a baby member. Uh, this is why it's proposed instead of subdivide in reference with the previous one that is customized. Okay. So uh, this one has a bit more uh, things. Uh, it explains how to join a committee. It talks about sending a motivation letter to the mailing list and what should be in this motivation letter. 
but actually most of the committees are not actually following this. The reason why uh, it's not following this is because uh, in order to um, improve the application system to, an to a committee, maybe you require a support questionnaire by your president, or maybe you are playing, for example, in the case of marketing, and you have to present some kind of portfolio about what you have done, what are your skills. This is not registered. So what we are proposing is changing this general way of applying to committees that is no longer valid. Two, just referencing to, uh, to explaining that um, in internal regulations of every committee, it will be explained how to join the committee, because different committees have different application methods. OK. Uh, at the same time, it mentions that the moment you join a committee, you become a BB member. But that's not usually the case. Most, many committees have the status of trainee. So it's also something that instead of having this categorical uh, statement on committee regulations, we reference to internal regulations of the committee. Is that. So the question you may think, hmm, one of your board goals is gym efficiency. We're discussing this here. So even though this, this uh, proposal may seem too technical, Kat already explained why we're discussing this. But the question is, if we are changing regulations because committees are no longer, um, like committee regulations are no longer explaining or covering what committees are doing, the question is, why do we change the regulations and not the committees? Well, uh, regulations are there to help us. Are there to explain what's actually happening. They are not there to prevent us from actually working. Committees are working completely fine. Uh, have different working pra um, methodologies, but at the moment, because they have evolved, and this document hasn't evolved from the previous year, uh, this document hasn't been updated. So this is why we consider that regulation shouldn't impede us from working efficiently. Actually, regulation should cover our current working methods. So, yeah, as Kat said before, uh, in order to have this proposal approved, we need uh, two thirds of the votes, and absences shall be included in the number of vote cast. So, do you have any question? A question from Kishino. Uh, hello, Lorin from Kishino. Uh, I just wanted to ask, in 7.4, uh, you deleted the, the, the candidate will uh, have the status of a baby member to the relevant of, uh, to the committee. And um, on the page before, there is, uh, again, a change in the regulation. Uh, there are at least two membership levels in a committee, baby member and full member. So why then uh, do we specify in 7.1 the status of baby member and full member if after the words the committee decides which is the status? OK. Yeah, okay. yeah that, that's the idea, is that at the moment it says that there is baby and full. And when you join, you become baby. But it's not always this case, because for example, you have trainee. And it's not a subdivision of baby. So what we are trying to provide is as much uh, freedom like flexibility, we're trying to provide flexibility to, all, to committees. Because in this case, you only have these two membership levels. And you automatically, the moment you join, you become a baby member. But that's not always the case. Okay. In case it's not clear, I would like to give you an um, example. Uh, let's say that this was not for committees, but for your LBG. And we were saying that uh, so all LBGs should have baby and full members. And in our regulations, we say that all LBGs, uh, all people that join an LBG, become automatically BAME members. That is exactly what was written there, but about committees. But in your LBG, you have observers, babies, and full members. And you actually, the observers is not just people that observe, but are like the first tasks people. So for you, for your LBG, you have more than two statuses. You don't have only baby and full. You have observer baby and full. And at the moment that a new member joins your LBG, he doesn't become baby, but he becomes observer. So that is exactly how it happens with committees. Is it clear? Thank you. Question from Istanbul. Oh, it's a two-finger from uh, Stockholm. We take that first. 
and then Istanbul. Hey, I'm Ricardo from Stockholm. <coughs> So my question is, if you want to leave uh, committees the flexibility, why say that they have to have baby members and full members and not leave it completely to their regulation? So now, right now, before we change it, if we decide to do, it is stated that there are babies and full members. What we want to put is that there are at least babies and full They just want to have full members or stuff like that. Why is that not okay? Because committees did not work like that. It doesn't adapt to the needs of best. As the same with LBGs. In your LBG, do you have only full members? <laughs> do you understand? Do you understand? Thank you. If it's not clear, we can discuss it more. Okay, let's go to the next question from Istanbul. Hello, Marcian from Istanbul. Uh, the change into 7.1 already describes surely minimum levels uh, and types of membership levels. And uh, at the 7.1.3, that's changing this described levels. It's kind of inconsistency. Did you get what I mean? Um, maybe, uh, Peter, maybe can you go back so we can, Peter? Uh, maybe we can go back so we can visualize what we are talking about. Uh, go back. The other back. Uh, you were mentioned uh, 7.1 and 71.3, right? Like now next. 7.1. Yes, 7.1. Mm -hmm. Okay, at 7.1. The mini minimum levels are already described, but in the other point, you let them change. Yes, so it's a um, bit inconsistency. Okay, uh, for example, I can give the case of IPC. Uh, so, for example, in the case of IPC, you um, have um, baby, or you have tra uh, trainee, experienced trainee, full member, but at the same time, and then alumni. But at the same time, these are not called uh, only trainee, experience trainee, full. They're also called um, Ewok, Padawan, Jedi. Can I, can I complete? Uh, maybe brief paraphrase. In your LBG, you have to have at least babies and fools. That's what we say in the first 7.1. You have to have at least baby members and full members. But maybe you decide to have advisory members as well. This is not something that all LBGs should have, but you are allowed to do it. You are allowed to customize it. OK, thank you. OK, all clear now. Are there more questions? Three fingers, I see. OK, then we can move on. Thank you. And now we'll have a small uh, change in the schedule. We first take the best career day presentation, and alumni will follow later. So, Patty, it's showtime. Okay, uh, so this is a presentation about uh, Best Career Day. Uh, basically, what I'm going to present is uh, what is this concept about, why is Best Career Day important, and what is going to happen during the next Best Career Day. So, why, why is Best Career Day so important? Uh, well, in the first place, because we are improving one of the main uh, services that BEST provides, uh, which is career support. Uh, how are we doing this? Well, basically, we are matching students' uh, students' needs with company needs, um, because 
best career day will happen in official opening day of, of uh, general meetings. And uh, we, we realized that actually uh, students that we are uh, currently providing to the companies, students that we are currently providing to the companies uh, are not really matching the company needs. And uh, also the companies that we are providing for the students are not matching their needs. So basically, we want to match these needs between the students and the companies and make companies return to, to best, as well as having satisfied uh, companies and students. Another important point is uh, ensuring the financial stability of GMs, because in this way, we are providing uh, companies and universities to general meetings. So we are ensuring the financial stability of the event. So what actually is Best Career Day? Uh, well, it is an interna international job fair. Actually, it is the biggest international job fair that BES will organize. Uh, it will happen alongside with the official opening day of GMs, GA. Um, and what, it, what will happen? Uh, there will be 100 extra external students that will be selected by the companies, by the companies and universities participating in the event. So the previous edition happened in Valladolid, as some of you might already know. Um, the event turned out to be a huge success. Uh, we received a really good evaluation from the, from the companies as well as from the students. So here are some pictures from Valladolid. And we want to implement the same, uh, the same thing in uh, Bucharest in 2014. So the official opening day alongside with BCD will happen on 24th of April. Uh, the goal is to reach 1,000 applicants and to have 10 companies uh, who will select among these uh, 1,000 applicants. And we want to have 100 selected students. So we want to have 100 extra students participating. What activities there will happen? Uh, there will be interviews and job fairs uh, provided by the companies and universities, as well as workshops and company presentations. So what is the timeline for BCD? Uh, the application period that we thought about uh, is between 13th of January and 22nd of February. Uh, afterwards, the selection process by the companies will be between the 22nd of February and 5th of March. And afterwards, announcements and confirmations from the students uh, until 20, 25th of March. So, what can you actually gain? Well, you can contribute uh, to developing one of the main services of BEST, as I previously said. Uh, applicants can benefit of BCS afterwards, of career support afterwards, because they enter in the database uh, once they create their profile for applying to the event. Uh, also, you get the chance to develop the students from your university. And yes, in case you have uh, the biggest number of applicants, then your university has a free, a free place in the event itself. And also in this way, you get the chance to strengthen the relationship between uh, your LBG and, the univer and your university. So how can you actually promote the event? Well, uh, you can distrib distribute the promotional materials uh, that will be provided by marketing. Uh, afterwards, uh, there will be a promotion plan on social media. So you can share the Facebook and Twitter posts as well as uh, the BCD video that will be created, the video from the previous edition of BCD. Uh, also, uh, another um, thing that you can do is to send an email uh, to your database, to your own local database, uh, and you will receive the content of this email and how uh, you can actually address your, uh, yourself to, um, how, how can you explain exactly the event to the students from your university. And actually, you can promote BCD alongside with the season promotion. So maybe you have some doubts and you need some clarification about the event. So first of all, one question that might pop up in your mind is if LBG Bucharest is ready to host such an event because there will be around 350 uh, students pl plus there might be also some local students. So I want to ask uh, Cepo to answer to this question. Uh, yes, we already discussed with Patri and the board uh, this Best Career Day event and uh, we will organize it. When we look for official opening day, workshop place, accommodation, job fair and everything, we look for this 100 extra participants. So yes, we are ready to organize this event. 
Thank you, Chepo. Okay. So another doubt might be if uh, why would students be actually interested in such thing? Well, a lot of students are currently looking for career opportunities as well as study opportunities to work abroad, to work in an international company. Uh, so this might be a really huge opportunity for them. So I'm sure you want to develop the students from your university. And why would my university be interested to attend such event? Well, because probably also your university has some, some programs some programs that they, they would like to promote to the students that are participating there. So now it's time for questions. If you have some questions, please ask me now. Extra Andre. Hello, Extra Andre. Um, thank you for the presentation. Uh, it's a nice event with a lot of opportunities and a lot of potential. Uh, I want to ask you, how do you actually plan to involve the companies in the selection of the uh, students? You plan to have around 1,000 applicants, no? Yes, so we plan to have the 1,000 applicants, or even more, if it's possible. The goal is to reach 1,000. And basically, we are going to send the CVs to the companies, and they will select uh, the 100 uh, students. So each company will select a certain number of students like to reach the 100 uh, students students that will come to the event. Is it clear? OK, we have a two fingers from Cluj on this topic. Uh, Andre from Cluj Lampoca. Uh, question, is going, going to be like ranking of students based on their CV? Yes, company will select basically the participants that they want and they will rank some students that they would like to see there. Mainly the question is what happens if there, there are mismatching between uh, companies' opinions. But basically each company has the opportunity to select, for example, if 10 companies will be there, they can select, let's say, a certain number of students. So there will be some students selecting. Okay, thank you. Is it clear? And do you still have the one finger or not? You can't have it. No. Okay, first, uh, extra Andre with two fingers. Extra Andre is your one finger is cut, and you will just have a two finger, and your two finger also cut. You still want to ask a question? Your two finger cut, and you have a one finger. Okay, very clear now. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, you can have your one finger. Extra Andre again. Uh, about the dates for selection of uh, participants uh, for the companies, I would strongly suggest to extend it a little bit. I know how the job is because I'm actually working on CV screening and it's kind of hard for two weeks to look uh, for 1,000 CVs. Yeah, and basically so this is like the timeline that we created and we will try to like focused on it and so on, but of course, if, if it will not be possible, we should extend it a bit. Cool, thanks. Okay, now we go for Lisbon and then Porto. Lisbon cut, so Porto, and after Porto, Mostar. Uh, Felipe, Porto. So my question is, uh, as far as, as uh, I understand it, you want to, to have 100 non bestest students there, right? Yes, exactly. So they're going just for one day? Yes. OK. So um, I want to, to know, uh, what about the expenses for these students? Can uh, there be like a, a refund or something? Yes, the expenses will be covered by the, by the LBG, like the accommodation and the food. Of the I event mean, during the like, day itself. No, no, no. I mean, like travel uh, refunds also, because imagine, uh, imagine we have like two participants from Porto, and they have to go to Romania and come back just for one day. Maybe they don't want to go because of that. So I, I want to know if, uh, yeah, how it works and. We first take the clarification from Olaf. Love. Uh, okay. It's Japo, yeah. yeah, I don't have. A oh yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry. 
So uh, you mentioned at the beginning of your question that is only for non-besties, and I wanted to ask Patri if besties can apply as well for this event. Yes, about that, yes, besties can apply also. Basically, the application is open also for besties to apply. But the main focus should be on external students as well, because besties also have also other opportunities of development. But coming back to your other question, uh, so basically, we didn't take into consideration of uh, covering the travel expenses, and I can give you an example. Uh, for example, this kind of event is also organized by Careers International, which is a really big organization providing these kind of events, and students actually come there because they are interested to find a job, and it's a really huge event and really important event for them, and they come to, and they even come without this kind of refund. Okay, all clear. We go to the next, which is Valencia, and then Bruno. First Valencia. Irenuela Alvis Valencia. As in the last career day, we had a participant from Valencia attending, and she gave us a feedback that. Not all the companies were on her field of studies, but in the beginning she didn't know the companies because the deadline for application was very early and not all companies confirmed there. Have you think about this and how to solve this? Like, where you work on having all the confirmations of companies before the application deadline? Okay, so of course, FinTeam and also LBG Bucharest starting to fundraise quite early, and we strive to have uh, companies as soon as possible. But if, for example, we will have companies uh, confirming after the deadline, we will still accept them because this is how the fundraising process works. Okay, Bruno, and then Madrid. Yes, uh, Bruno, um, OBG Bruno Mazi, and I'd like a simple question. Uh, do you have any statistics uh, how successful we are on uh, Best Career Day? It means how many participants start cooperation with companies uh, based on this career day? Okay, so based on last year, right? Because it was only one edition that was last year, so based on that, on this, on last edition. Okay, so usually companies don't provide this kind of information, uh, but actually uh, one of the companies that participated uh, told me a few days ago actually that they hired students from the Best Career Day, so it was quite a successful event for them. Okay, Madrid and then Lyon. Hello, Pedro from Best Madrid. Two questions. Are you planning to increase the number of 100 students? And the second one, are you planning to do Best Career Day also in future President's meetings? We'll take one question at a time. We'll put your second question the at the back one. of the list. The first one and another one. So first number, question about the 100. Are you planning to increase the number of 100 students? Okay, so this number of 100 students, uh, we plan to stick to this number because basically we want to have the top students there. So the top students who are selected by the companies. So we want to have the 100 best students in the event and not having, let's say, 300 students who are not that, uh, who don't have the proper skills and so on. And we would like to have like the best students in the event. So at the moment we will stick with the number of 100 students. Okay, we move to Lyon. Remy from Lyon. Uh, I've heard that you had uh, five companies doing the GA Valladolid. I was not there, but I've heard this. Uh, so now you want to have 10 companies. Uh, did you change something in the process to, to get these companies? Mm -hmm. Are there differences in, in the process to get companies between GA Valladolid and GA Bucharest? Mm -hmm. Okay, so of course we analyzed the event itself uh, during FinTeam summer meeting uh, and we already started with the fundra fundraising process so we already have the plan and FinTeamers are really working hard to uh, bring these companies but I want to mention that the 10 companies is the goal that we want to reach so it might be less but it's the goal that we want to reach and yes, like it mostly depends on the fundraising process itself.
we first take the two fingers from Brashov. Adi from Brashov. Uh, how many uh, how many companies do you want to have on the Bucharest? I mentioned that ten. Oh. Ten is the goal. Okay. It can be more, of course. Now we have Madrid and then Leuven. Pedro Garcia from Mes Madrid. Are you planning to do best career days in President's meetings in the future? Mm -hmm. So we did it we did uh, best career day last year in Valladolid. We analyzed that it is not possible to do it in now in this PM Bruno because it was too early. Uh, next year we will do it in Bucharest and uh, the future generation will analyze as well if we are ready to do the event also in uh, in the next president's meeting in two thousand fourteen. After Leuven, Sofia. <coughs> Lorenz, LBG Leuven. Uh, this might have come over as critique, I assure you it's not. Um, I'm a fan of BCD, but my local engineering circle organizes job fairs of about 40 companies just for students of Leuven. Uh, however, this BCD has only 10 companies, leading to hour long queues for students all over Europe. Is it a deliberate choice for so few companies, or is it just not possible to get more than 10 companies? Okay, so the point is that I'm the goal that we set, like the 10 companies, is based on the previous years. So we wanted to, to, to have a reachable goal, uh, not a goal like 40 companies. This is not happening in, in this kind of international job fairs, because the, the fundraising is different than on local level. Okay for Leuven, then we move to Sofia and then Saloniki. Dimitar, LBG Sofia. Uh, this is more like a marketing oriented question. Um, do you have something like a statistics? How many of the students that actually went there that are non besties actually got a job or like whatever? I this was already this asked. Previously. So we go to Saloniki. Sofia from LBG Saloniki. I want to ask how many applicants there were last year, and you're targeting a thousand applicants this year, and also how many of them were, no, how many, no, how many applicants there were from a city, at, not Valladolid or Spain, let's say, but from faraway places? So, first question was how many applicants? There were 500 applicants. And second one, how many of Valladolid? I don't know the exact number, uh, but most of them were outside Valladolid because it was promoted uh, throughout the whole Europe. We also had in the event local students, uh, which were separately from these uh, students that we selected for BCD. We first take the question from Extra Thomas. Um, my, I'm Thomas Extra. Um, my question is, already for a lot of uh, LBGs, GA is a really big event, and official opening day is a really huge day. It's a lot of work, work and a lot of work. How are you going to plan this with 100 extra people, and how, are you, how, is, how is it going to influence the future for people applying for this function? Maybe Chevo can answer to this question, since he's more logistical uh, side of the event. Okay, so we realize there's a lot of micromanaging for this official opening day. We have a responsible just for this day, and uh, uh, she's taking care of it. She's very responsible, and I consider capable of doing this on her own uh, with the help of the entire LBG. So uh, I'm not sure if I answered your, your question, but uh, that's how we will do. My question was, it's already on previous GAs and also here on PM, they were, they were talking on, yeah, it's it's a difficult day, you need a lot of people on different moments, and now you're adding 100 extra people to this moment. 
And I'm just, it's not, maybe not only for you, but also for potential on the other LBGs who want to organize GA or even PM if you're going to do this also for PM. How are you going to manage this? This also, you can also see the other question for here for Bruno. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, first of all, uh, it is hard indeed, but it's doable since Valladolid already did it and uh, we will do it. And for uh, the knowledge, I think uh, we, uh, we are in contact with David and the G uh, core team uh, and we are asking them everything that we need to, to know and I think this way we can manage it in the future. And I want to say one more thing. Uh, we are actually here in best to develop ourselves and to push our limits. Uh, so we actually want to strive all the time for, for more and for the best. And we take another question from Tallinn. Hello, I'm Rul from Tallinn and uh, I have a question that you thought that it's a little bit different and harder to fundraise uh, for GAs. Have you ever thought maybe to include local groups for that because uh, there are like a lot of uh, LBGs that are already doing a lot of corporations here. This comparison I know at least from Estonia as well. Some who are interested in uh, international students as well and if it like I don't know, share the benefits from the money or something like that then maybe there would be more people who would benefit and uh, get you companies to the general meetings. Just a thought. You are asking me if we asked LBGs how they are fundraising for, inter for job fairs? Uh, no, to help with fundraising because we are already like, at least in Tallinn, like uh, contacting more than 300 companies in Estonia and some companies don't come to our job fair because they say like, okay, we are only interested about international students, but uh, have you thought about this, uh, like thought that maybe you can corp like, cooperate with the LBGs? to help to find uh, sponsors for GMs? Well, we are cooperating with LBGs because in Fintim there are also our LBG members, so they can provide the knowledge and so on. But it's not, like it's working differently. Fintim is fundraising for Best International and it's fundraising for GMs and EBEC. So we cannot cooperate in this sense with LBGs. We have a question from Herkjavik. Is there any reason why you can't cooperate with LBGs? Because LBGs cannot fundraise for international best. Like international best cannot fundraise for LBGs. Two fingers from Fintim. Andrea from Fintim. Of course, the, um, in case an LBG has um, a company who is willing to, cop to um, recruit international people, then here you can uh, you can help us. You can put us in contact with that specific company. But I wouldn't go that far because it's really managed at this moment. To um, it's really hard to manage um, a whole team, a whole international team, plus adding 95 LBGs. That would be a lot of work, and I don't think it's doable. Thank you. Next question is from Lisbon. Rita uh, from Lisbon is just for scheduling it. Uh, when you will you provide us the materials that you were saying that you wanted the LBGs? So. We plan to have them until uh, like Christmas. Christmas, yes. Okay, these were a lot of questions. I don't see any more fingers, so we can move on. Thank you, Patti. Now, as you might have seen, the alumni have arrived, uh, but I first want to do a wake-up game from Pedro from Madrid. It's something with sticking out your thumbs. Can you come to the middle of the plenary? Pedro, LBG Madrid, wake-up game. Can somebody wake up Pedro for the wake-up <laughs> game? 
you definitely needed it. Uh, I will need a Spanish people, please. Come. Oti. Uh, and, and for the rest of the people, we need you to stand up. Okay, thank you, Pedro, and Spanish. And now we would like the alumni who were enrolling into discussion groups to join us in the middle of the plenary. Guys, come on. Hello. They're also a little bit slow, so have a bit of patience. Woo, 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 woo. Thanks, Xavier. <laughs> Hello and uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Vlad. Um, I'm uh, this year the Alumni Net Coordinator. And um, tonight I'll present a bit what, uh, what alumni are doing uh, after BEST, uh, what's happening, and uh, What's a bit the status with uh, the alumni network? So um, on private, actually, there are seven, eight thousand alumni. I uh, made a typo there and uh, saw it too late. Corrected. So quite a lot of people and uh, a lot of smart people uh, in our network. Uh, we now have uh, seventy-six people in alumni net, and maybe two words about alumni net. Uh, it should be the mailing list and the, the group of people that uh, work towards uh, developing the, the alumni network. I'm saying should because it's not actually 100% happening this. There are initiatives, but I think, as I said there and I put there, there's a huge potential. But still, we have a long way to go uh, to really have a developed uh, alumni network. If we talk about alumni initiatives, uh, obviously first uh, would be alumni meetings. We these days have an alumni meeting. I'll talk about uh, this a bit later. Uh, but there are also other things. And also there are quite a number of local um, initiatives. I won't talk about those. Those are really um, dependent on the, the alumni in a specific city. So um, I don't have a lot of information about those. 
but you as an LBG in a, in a specific city could find out about those. Um, about alumni business camp and alumni mentorship program, I'll uh, talk in the next slides. And about alumni data database, as I said, we have 8,000 alumni, but um, a lot of people don't update their um, details on private, so we can't really know what they're doing, where they are, um, so what their status and what's happening with them. And there's no real feeling of a, of a bonded uh, alumni network, let's say. This is my view, at least. So, yeah, through the alumni database uh, initiative, we're trying to to make alumni um, update their information, and there's also an idea to create a separate um, portal, which would have um, enhanced functionalities for alumni. Can you click? Can you click? Yeah, thanks. So about Alumni Business Camp, um, basically, as the name suggests, it's um, a camp of um, two, three days where a bunch of alumni meet to discuss business. Basically, um, the people that go there have the desire of uh, starting a company, so they, they want to be entrepreneurs or they are entrepreneurs. And um, for that uh, extended weekend, they meet, discuss different uh, topics about entrepreneurship, change ideas, and uh, try to develop uh, further what, what they're doing. Uh, it started in 2011. Uh, the first event was in Berlin, and last year it happened in Barcelona, and this year it, uh, it was in uh, Brussels. So it was quite um, a successful initiative. Now it's uh, the, th the third edition, and they're already um, trying to figure out where um, they will organize it next. So if we talk about uh, what happened in Brussels, there were 85 participants and two and a half days, so basically an extended weekend from Friday afternoon until Sunday. Uh, Friday morning. Thanks. Um, some highlights. There were eight presentations on topics related to, to entrepreneurship. Uh, there were nine business pitches in front of four mentors, which could uh, further help the, the people that pitch their ideas to develop them. There were all eight workshops, again, on uh, very specific entrepreneurship um, topics, like lean startup or other things like this. And um, at the official dinner, there were 116 people and uh, a real baby, so not an alumni baby or something, but a real baby. And there were a lot of, a lot of uh, OST discussions and, uh, and beers in between, um, because yeah, why not? About alumni mentorship program, um, as the name suggests, and uh, I think it's straightforward that it would pair alumni uh, to each other to sort of try to um, help each other and mentor. Um, the matching would be done on um, on career-related uh, uh, KPIs, let's say, or um, like based on background in the industry, um, and for. To be a mentor, you need two years um, of work experience. So you do need some um, some more work experience. Um, and the first pairs will be matched in December. So after that, um, this program will kick off, and we'll see what uh, what happens with that. Alumni meeting at uh, PM. So these um, few days, we are um, 23 uh, alumni present. Um, you receive the list in your uh, mailboxes with uh, with the alumni and um, with some basic information about our, our us, so you can have a look and uh, see who you can talk with. And um, the event is mostly a leisure event, um, as you probably know. Uh, but also we want to to make um, to make it a bit more added value, so we introduced a networking um, evening. Uh, this is tonight, uh, and we'll g give you more details about that um, after dinner. Um, also, tomorrow there will be some discussion groups uh, between alumni and also with uh, with uh, active uh, besties. That's about it from my side. If you have any questions or any of the alumni wants to add anything.
Okay, you can raise your signs. We'll take questions. Who is first? Klush. And then this one. Hello, Andre from Klush. Congratulations for the presentation. Uh, I have a question regarding ABC. Yes? Okay. Uh, who is actually organizing these events and if the LBGs are somehow involved in this project? Should I change the mic? It's not a mobile phone. Uh, okay, let's uh, move on. So to answer your uh, your question, um, the event was initiated by uh, Tassos and Philippe, so two, two alumni, and uh, they put together a group of volunteers that basically organizes these, uh, these events for the past three years. Uh, the team changed um, various on location. There were some, um, some help from uh, local LBG. I know last year in, uh, in Barcelona that um, there were a couple of active members that supported the event. Um, and not necessarily an official thing uh, as an LBG support. Did I answer both questions? Thanks. Next question for Lisbon and then Naples. Technical from Uppsala, yes. Can you pass the microphone to Uppsala? Yeah, uh, Namer Uppsala. Yeah. I think it was this microphone uh, because it was next to your pocket and it was on when I got it and it was turned off when I got it and you pushed the button, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so okay, Rita from Lisbon. Uh, I already knew about uh, uh, ABC, but I never like, looked for information. So I just wanted to know something. Can any alumni mm -hmm. for like uh, LBGs apply for that? Okay, thank you. I got the answer. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Any other questions? We have a question from Naples. Can you stand up? As well. The Marco from Nichols. Um, if you already gather some statistics in your alumni network, I would be quite curious to know if uh, what is the average age of uh, the members that now are in the network. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's classified. Apparently, alumni uh, do not agree with this question. Um, yeah, it would be an interesting information. I think we could easily find out through an export uh, from private. So maybe it's something to talk with the ITC to get uh, get it done to see because you have the the age there. Basically, I, I don't know. To answer your question, I do, I can know about the maximum age. Is that uh, the maximum age? What I know about the case in Portugal when an, an alumni with the son or the daughter with a child that was already a baby in the LBG. So it's going oh, there. <laughs> okay. And anyway, in our hearts, we're always young. So. so next question is from Almada and then Heikovic. Hi, <laughs> Fernando from Almada. Uh, where can the alumni get information about this? All the alumni can that you speak are, up? All the alumni that are on the, the private area receive this kind of, the, of information? Because I know that at least in, in Almada we have some alumni that are not there. We cannot hear you. You have to really speak up. Oh. <laughs> Might help. Hey, do you hear me? Okay. 
uh, where the, the the alumni can get more information about that because I know that all, all the alumni that are on the private area receive this information uh, because I know uh, in Almada we have some alumni that are not there are not on the private area <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Vlad, can you rephrase for anybody? Yeah. And uh, we have first the technical from uh, Istanbul. Hello, Marcin Istanbul. I think Peter turned down the volume because it wasn't like that before. I turned it down, so now it's okay, no? The... Um, no, no, no. This we cannot hear anything from. This okay, I will uh, up that one. Uh, can you tell me which number is written on your microphone? One. Okay, so uh, Vlad, can you rephrase the question? Yeah. So um, the question was, uh, how uh, people that are alumni that are not uh, on private as alumni can find out about events. <laughs> there. Okay, now everybody can hear me, right? Yeah. So we understood the question. Yeah. Okay. So how can uh, alumni that are not with the alumni status on private can find out about uh, what's happening in the alumni world? Well, um, there's not much we can do because uh, basically, when you become an alumni on private, you get registered on um, the alumni mailing list. So they should be uh, registered as uh, alumni on private in order to get this information. Uh, alumni is like a self-subscribed mailing list. Therefore, you can all subscribe to alumni mailing list and get information as well. That's also true. So next question is from Reykjavik and then Ibek. Who is first? Oh, uh, I'm Daniel from Reykjavik. I was wondering if you uh, propose, uh, purposefully um, chose uh, the networking event on international evening. Can you clarify? Uh, I meant uh, that you choose to have your networking event at international e international evening on purpose. On purpose. In order to forget everything. No. Uh, it was due to to schedule arrangements. Uh, basically, we arrived today um, here. On location. Uh, yesterday we spent the night in uh, Bruno, so it was a bit more logistical. And I think it's interesting to to get to know alumni tonight, and then you can also have a have a chat with them tomorrow. Okay, we move on to Ebeck, and then deputy. Uh, hello, I am Chade from Istanbul and uh, Ebeck coordinator. Uh, I would like to ask uh, the name of the oldest uh, alumni we have in Best for Best. Uh, we know about uh, Guy Raul Toniste, I think if I pronounce his name correctly. Do you know how old is he? Xavier? Our history book. Uh, the first president of BES is Ida Daubor from Trondheim, and uh, she's still on the mailing list and following up what is going on. So she's a president from 89, and she's still there. So we don't know exactly how old uh, is the oldest alumni. Maybe alumnus. that's something we can work on. <laughs> OK, question now from uh, Peter. Uh, Peter, deputy speaker. Um, it's semi-bullshit. Uh, if you have children like shortly coming, uh, would you want them to join best or not? Me personally, or us alumni? Okay, uh... we can just do a show of hands. Those that want their children to join best, stand up. They don't make people stand alumni up. Alumni have some problems <laughs> with their eyes to stand up, I see. So, okay. Clearly, yes. So it's a yes. I mean, uh, best uh, was in all, all our lives uh, very important. And I guess that's why we're still here. Next question from Zagreb, then CFPS. Can you stand up?
Thank you. Okay, so the question is, um, you talked about this um, network that connects uh, alumni with, uh, with similar backgrounds. Uh, so is this uh, like with a computer, a computer does this? And if yes, uh, do you do it with ITC? And how does it work? Uh, could you just like clarify on this? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a very fresh initiative. Um, the idea was launched um, a couple months ago. So now it's sort of in a pilot uh, phase. There are some mentors that um, subscribe for this, and um, soon they, there will be a call for uh, mentees, so the, the people that are getting mentorship. And the first matching will be done in December, but I, I expect it to be manually because probably not a lot of people will be in this. Next question from CFES, none from talk. Can you give the microphone? Hi, uh, Nick from CFES. Uh, next question is more of a comment, but has it ever been considered to work with alumni um, to leverage the alumni of BEST to work on sponsorship? I understand that's something that uh, BEST works for a lot and the alumni happens to be within the company, so I know that's a lot of organizations, uh, that's what they do, so just a, a comment and a question. Thanks. Indeed, um, I think alumni were a source um, of at least information and uh, maybe inside the help, um, but obviously if uh, alumni don't update their um, profiles on private, you can't really know from behind the desk who what's uh, doing what. Who's doing what? <coughs> Question from Tok. Then Talin. Uh, Tok from the board. Um, it's more of a, of a comment. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you know, but uh, this year is the 25th anniversary of BEST, and we are planning to uh, create a 25-year history book. Um, and I wanted uh, to ask for your guys' help into retrieving the stories from, from BEST in order to make the image complete of the organization. Can I, can I rely on your help? Cool. Xavier? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so five years ago, there was a 20th anniversary history book. So we just did like younger alumni than me to make like the five years difference and that's it. I think we can still uh, try to find other stories that are not in there. No, no. The good stories will never be in the book. It can be told from people to people to people to people to people. It's also interesting. Okay, let's move to the question from Talen. <coughs> Do, do, do. Rule from LBG Tallinn. Uh, have a question. Have you thought about promoting uh, your network through LBGs? Because I know that our alumni network, there are like more than 130 alumni, and in the mailing list, uh, all our parties are there. Haven't had any information about uh, alumni, and probably not many even knows about that. Thank you. Um, actually, we didn't. I didn't think of uh, that direction, and I don't know if anyone else uh, thought, but um, obviously you're now here, so if you go home, you can uh, tell your alumni interesting stuff is going on with uh, alumni net, so um, maybe check your mailing list or subscribe to the alumni mailing list. But also it's a, it's a nice idea, and we'll uh, keep it on board. Okay, that was all the questions we had. I want to thank you all for coming here and have a good trip back to the bar. Thank you. <laughs> you can drink Update. in the jacuzzi. They're going to the jacuzzi. And now for something completely different, the CEFI annual conference.
Okay, Misha, can you get in the middle already for the presentation? Uh, there are also two slippers here in front of the mattress. The owner can always pick them up. To load, I hope. Maybe you would like to sing something. There's a there's a certain song by uh, yeah the wall. Mm -hmm. Which certain song? A song that you would like. It's a song considering education. <laughs> Could you remind me? Uh, it's uh, the wall. Another brick in the wall. <laughs> no, not this time. My presentation is all ready. I managed to tangle the time. Would you like a clicker? Yes. Things. Uh, as I promised, uh, today, now, I will uh, brief you or like tell you a bit more about uh, CEFI annual conference, which I briefly mentioned in the SAR of Educo, and it also. Can you switch off the light, somebody? I need some intimacy with the plenary. Okay, so uh, uh, I will speak to you about the what's going on. I will speak. <laughs> I'll speak to you about Safi Annual Conference, uh, which name is uh, Engineering Education, uh, 1973, 12, 13, first forward, which happened in uh, September in Leuven, in Belgium. And we will briefly go through uh, best and safety cooperation. Then we will go a bit more detailed to what has actually happened in Loven, and uh, we'll uh, I'll describe you best activities there, and we will sum up with the outcomes. So it's one of the last sessions. Relax and perceive. So what is actually CEFI? I will just uh, repeat uh, some information which you got from CEFI representative on official opening day. So uh, CEFI is a French acronym for uh, European Society for Engineering and Education. You can find the French description in the front line on the logo. And basically, this is the largest uh, network in Europe of uh, institutions, individuals, organizations, and companies which are interested in uh, Improving and shaping engineering education in Europe. Uh, what do we actually do together with BEST? We have really long history uh, of cooperation together, and uh, this is our the most, let's say, long time cooperated partner. Actually, BEST Educational Involvement was initiated uh, by CEFI in 1996, and uh, from that time, we've been cooperating quite closely. And uh, you can also check today famous green booklet for uh, nice uh, testimonials from ex-president of CEFI for this cooperation. And uh, for a long time, uh, CEFI considers BEST as a main uh, student stakeholder in the organization. However, we are not the member of the organization. We are not one of the institutions or organizations. We are considered as associated partner. As we not depend on CEFI, we kind of uh, take benefits from each other. So that's how this cooperation goes. What happened in Loven? Uh, there is a small mistake which I want to say sorry for LBG Loven. It's not KTU, it's KU Loven, uh, Catholic Universitat. There, uh, the, uh, the format of annual conference uh, uh, helps CEFI to gather all the institutions and involved members to uh, actually discuss engineering education, to exchange better practices. And it was a lot of pe people who are interested in uh, changing engineering education, higher engineering education in Europe, 
to to the Berta. And uh, we are one of those organizations also interested in that. And uh, let's go a little bit more in numbers and facts. So also on this conference, uh, on this conference uh, there was a great celebration of 40th anniversary of CEFI, the quite old organization and the oldest one regarded for engineering education in Europe. It gathered, uh, um, as usually, around uh, 300 academics and company representatives there. We managed to gather uh, 15 international students on behalf of BEST. Uh, not Educo members, I will point it out, as there was already a question before, but uh, exactly the students who might uh, benefit from the conference and get involved there. Uh, of course, there were experts and professors. And they both are aiming to do something valuable and usable for practice later on. What we actually did there, it doesn't work. Can you click? No, 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 no. <laughs> Not that fast. I'm sorry. Sing. 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 I will sing an international evening. Find me. Or in the swimming pool. I've heard there is a swimming pool here. Okay, you're yeah. tied up. <laughs> <laughs> Stop trolling me. Entertain us, do a dance, a trick. Uh, I do not know any tricks, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm boring. <laughs> Let's do a wave. <laughs> Excuse me, what? One, two, three. <laughs> Shall we do a wave? Yep. I mean. Not only Harry <laughs> Potter, also the actor from uh, Back to the Future, and sometimes Frodo from Lord of the Rings. Yes. <laughs> Okay, either we can make uh, fun here, either we go to the next presentation. Okay, good choice for fun, whatever.
Mm-hmm. Okay, Vicente will start now in the LBG reports. Yes, you know the presentation. That's okay. We'll just show something, and he will uh, he will find out. It's okay. Surprises. Okay, so after all the efforts you put into filling out the LVG reports with more or less success, here you have the outcomes of all the of all your of your reports. So why do we do the report? Is to get to know the status of the organization, to know if the LVGs are healthy, and be able to help them, and as well to be able to ref to reflect upon ourselves. So this presentation is showing you a lot of data, it's facts, but I would like to point out that uh, LVG reports were not filled very accurately, and you will see some uh, examples during the presentation, and this causes some problem in the analysis of the data. Okay, to begin with, we can see here that uh, apparently uh, we missed 714 members since GA, but uh, this number it's very confuses because we have one LVG that normally says that they have like around 80 members and in the LVG report it said that they have eight full members. So okay, we don't, have, we don't know how uh, accurate are this data, but it already said that we are 3,100 uh, 3, besties, but okay, it could be near to the 3,300 that we already know from all their data. So, uh, we have this analyze here in which we can see that the average of members is between 32 with plus minus 20 members, but uh, we can see here the median in which we see that the half of the organization is in the left part, so uh, it means that uh, our groups are growing. Uh, the meaning of this uh, line, red line, uh, is to show you uh, not the not the average, but Not, not the average, but to see uh, how much, how many LVGs we are having in that situation. So to mm, discard like the uh, very high cases or the very low cases. Okay, so we can see here that uh, we are uh, providing a private area uh, around 50% of the LVGs since the baby membership and 44. Uh, percent when they become full members. The conclusion is that uh, this topic is a bit tricky because it's rising the, the access. Now we have this project from the hand of the of ITC in which we will be able to change the access rights depending of the members of the membership uh, levels in the LVGs, which will allow your members to go into private area and help you a bit more even when they are joining the LVG. But try to think about also our, uh, on knowledge management because you know that uh, private area it's a very sensible tool and we shouldn't be playing with it that uh, easily. Okay, so we were talking about we have different tools and this very powerful one, HR tool, uh, it's been used by 28 LVGs, seven more than last time. The number is racing. Keep on that. But why are you not using this very, this very awesome tool? 
So the tool is working. We are improving it more and more every time. But in order to improve it, it has to be used. So if you don't go there and you don't use the HR tool, it won't get improved. And by the way, it's done for you, so. OK. Very good number. In total, we can count uh, around 426 international involved members. We see that the number is rising. So the promotion you are doing, it's very, very good. So keep on doing this promotion because it's helping you. In the human resources, we see here that uh, from 0 to 29, uh, we have an average of four members, four international involved members in every LVG. And we have to point out that even this uh, low, uh, low HR and LVGs also have this. So it means we are getting more international involved. We have this very high number in zero international involved members, so try to think about it. Our conclusion is that international, involve, uh, international involvement brings a lot of knowledge to your LVG. It's not only to get involved in the, uh, in the association, it contributes to the development of the association, but it also brings a lot of knowledge to your, to your LVGs. OK, this graphic talks about the transition period in the LVGs. You cannot see very well the months there. But most of you have at least uh, two months of one month or two months of uh, transition period. So the advice here is to, that it's uh, very uh, nice to have a transition period. It allows your board to have this KT in the meantime and learn stronger. OK, we have here some numbers about active uh, number of active trainers. In best, it's 98, LV, uh, 98 members. And the sessions delivered were uh, around 249. Board trainings on PM 2012, Timisoara, last year, it was 74 LVGs that had board training. This year, two more were added. So that's very nice. Um, and this year, we were also asking you about the midterm board evaluation, and around the 50, 56 LVGs were, are having this. So it's very cool. It will bring a lot of data for Tigro to improve about midterm board evaluations. Uh, a strategic plan to develop your members. It says here that we lost six LVGs since last PM. And we think that it's also a very nice tool for you to to develop your LVG, so don't lose it. OK, here we have some data about every time having more followers and more followers. And from <laughs> Facebook, we can see that we lost three Facebook pages of LVGs. Do any of you really deleted the Facebook account of your LVG? Here we have data about the promotion of the courses. And we can, we can see here that there is still a very a low number of promotion for autumn and winter courses. These courses are also uh, worked upon by LVGs. They really work a lot on these courses. So why are you not promoting these, these seasons? On finances, we see here that we have uh, around 1,600 and 600 euros more. And the median is around 9,000 which means we are growing richer. And we can see here that in an average of uh, uh, 14K, we had this change in the media, which means, again, that the groups are growing richer. Do you think that your LVG is rich enough? Normally, they say, no, we are missing money. We need more money, but wait a minute. Apparently, from this report, 75% of the people are still are, uh, are happy with the financial situation of the LVGs. But we can see also that we are losing uh, fundraisers in, in the groups.
Okay, I cannot really see what was this about, so I will just skip it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, it, this was about F, sorry. This was Three, about uh, two, FR members also. And this is the all together, how much money are we spending in every kind of uh, external on, on events. So we have that almost the half of our money is going to external events, which is pretty much logic. And then we have this big number also about internal events, which is 19%, but we are including there also GMs. Okay, so your evaluation about yourself is pretty much the same as in previous year, in previous GMs, which is a bit questionable, since it's very, it, these data are very, very strange. So I believe that it could have changed a bit the answers from previous reports. And the only big difference that we can see is in HR, in which we see that for a bigger number of, uh, of members in your LVGs, you are less happy with the results. And also that for more internationally involved members, you have the same perception of the quality of your international involvement of your LVG. Here we have some data also about the diversity on the LVGs. And this is what is normally known as being a strong LVG or a weak LVG. But as we see here, the percentage of internationally involved members, uh, percentually for these big LVGs with plus uh, 40 members, and for these small ones less than 20, uh, is not this a big difference. So if you go a bit down, and you take a look at the incomes and the uh, total income per FRS that you have in the LVG, means that uh, you have you are fundraising even more money in small LVGs than in big ones. So again, it's not about the quantity, but about the quality. So if now you have some questions, Thank you, Vicente. Questions? Questions? Brush off? Can you stand up? Adrian from Brush off. Uh, we can have this report on PA or somewhere? Hello, Kat from the board. Kat from the board. Uh, all the reports are available. Not uh, this presentation will also be available, but all the reports are available in private area under surveys, LBG reports. We go for a technical from Peter. Uh, yes, uh, can one of the microphone checkers, uh, um, runners, please check if uh, one of the alumni forgot his phone probably on one of the mattresses. Can one of the uh, checkers just check and give it to me then, if you find it. You can call him. OK, it's been found. Thank you. So do we have another question? No question? OK, then we're good. And then I have a question. Uh, OK. So we can move on. Thank you, Vicente, for presenting all these nice statistics. Unfortunately, the SAFI presentation from Misha is not working yet. So um, we'll have to do it after dinner. So what will happen now? Uh, we'll first have some announcements. Then it's dinner time. Then we come back here. Misha will present uh, the missing slides. And then we'll have a nice uh, gathering with the alumni uh, for a discussion. So announcements, Peter? Okay, so the alumni asked me to tell you that in your mailboxes you will uh, find some uh, documents 
Uh, please bring them with you for the session in the evening. Uh, then uh, Reykjavik mascot, the Puffin Puff Daddy, was uh, stolen on opening day from Tampere, who stole it on Nudikaram Helsinki. If I don't get it back before international evening, I will bring Icelandic foods to international evening. Open. I'm not done yet. Open bracket, rotten shark, close brackets. Regards, Reykjavik. P.S. I'm in room C216. So um, if anyone wants rotten shark, room C216 is where you have to be. Uh, and otherwise, we need to find the mascot. OK. Uh, then two announcements from organizers. Uh, one of them uh, is that the cups are finally ready. And you can go to the help desk to collect them. They will also contain a couple of uh, pieces of paper that you will need to go for dinner. So before you go to dinner, pass by the help desk first. You will get your cup and the ticket to eat. Uh, and then there was another announcement from the organizers from uh, Wojtek, if I'm not mistaken. And that's it. So. Uh, Wojtek? 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 Hello, you have some announcements I heard? Oh, Wojtek? Wojtek? I thought it was Guy's name, but okay. Okay, organizers have announcement. The first, we have this really cool hoodies. And those who ordered it, you can take it or come to help desk and you will get it. Uh, the second, if you don't have check money and you will need it for drinking in the bar, uh, come to help desk as well and you can exchange your money. And uh, there are also caps. You pay the deposit. I don't have it, but it's also cool. And uh, it's next to Helpless as well. OK. Thank you, organizers. Is there something else? I.e. What's the party? OK, so I need something about international evening from Wojtek then. OK. Organizing organizers. They are talking in Czech. I don't get it. So uh, uh, one more thing. Just uh, before dinner, please get to the help desk, and you will uh, get the food ticket for the rest of your of the, of the PM. So don't lose it. It will be distributed together with the uh, with the cups. And I believe it's all from organizers. Something for okay, I have another announcement. Uh, you can pick up the cups and they have tickets for your dinner. <laughs> so <laughs> don't forget that. <laughs> okay, uh, that's it for announcements. Back to Christoph. Um, can LBC Thessaloniki come to me uh, now before uh, dinner? And uh, Peter, you want to say something about rehearsal? Rehearsal? Uh, yes, the people that want to rehearse, uh, just come to me now uh, before going to uh, dinner, if you don't mind. If you want to hear your presentation in the plenary. And then we're. Technical film, no? Can somebody bring a microphone? Um, I just want to add that dinner starts as schedule says. It means that you have 30 minutes break right now. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I just yes. wanted to say that dinner starts on time. It means. It means at 20.30. So not sure about ending of this session. So that's the reason why I'm saying this. Yes. It's everything. Thank you. OK. 
first one, okay, two fingers from Tim Mishwaya. Can you pass the microphone? Yeah, we have time now, so go on. <laughs> Wait for the microphone. It's okay, we have time, no worry. Okay, uh, Finta from Timisoara. Are you going? Are we going to divide again into two groups, like one side and the other? Just wait for it. <laughs> this was coming. Okay, hey Kavik, you also had two fingers. It was the same. Uh -huh. Anybody else the same? Because I will say it anyhow. No, Valencia. Can you pass the microphone to Valencia? It's behind you. Look behind you. The other behind. <laughs> Alex from <coughs> Alex from Valencia. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, is it possible to make fire during international evening? Like I mean, you know, Quantro and like, Stro stuff. To make what? Fire. Any organizer? No, 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 no fire, guys. No fire. And also, no fireworks inside. Okay. So now, uh, extra Andre also has a question. About the food tickets, uh, have you developed a system, maybe not to use the whole brick for taking the food ticket? The distribution of the food tickets. Uh, you, so I can clarify. Uh, usually it takes quite a long time if we stand in the queue one by one, so maybe we can have another way to deliver the tickets for the food. Or I don't know. Maybe you thought about it already. We have time now, guys. We have 30 minutes extra, so no worries. You can ah, okay. queue 30 minutes. It's perfect. Anybody knows a good song or something? You want to add something? No? Okay, then it's like that. Uh, first, we go to Klush. Hello, Andre from Klush. Uh, I have a question about the pins, the best pins, and about their distribution. This is your question? Yes, since we have time. Okay. So, market team can reply. Wait a second, guys. Uh, if you want to ask a question, you have to keep your sign up, and then we will show you when you can take it down again, okay? So now I have on the list Yildiz, Pitte, and Mostai. Okay, you did? Okay, so the best pins arrive today, and they will be distributed either during uh, dinner or tomorrow in the coffee breaks, and you will find it in your mailbox outside. Okay, next one is for Yildiz. Hey, it's Tunch from Yildiz. And it was a great day and a tiring also. So I have a question like, so what are we doing right now? Like, <laughs> we're gonna do something. <laughs> we can go. This is, very, this is getting very meta, so we are like, we have half an hour question time, guys, so keep keep them coming. Okay, next one. Must I? Alamir from Mostar. Uh, just for organizers' technical questions, uh, if we will have uh, buses for departure day on uh, how they arrange that. <laughs> <laughs> You want to talk already about departure day, or maybe you wait for it? Microphone? Microphone. Information about departure day. I don't know you got so fed up with the event already, you want to leave? <laughs> no? You, he has a question. Oh, three fingers. Really, guys? You don't want to leave? Okay, cool. Okay, let's have more questions. No, first announcement. Announcement. Peter, announcements. Uh, yes, I got yet another. Um, I actually, can everybody uh, who has a mascot is related to a mascot, sometimes steals a mascot or uh, likes mascots, stand up, please. Abigis with mascots, can you stand up? Okay, like a uh, rough count tells me that there are around 50 mascots here. They will all get stolen. They will all get lost. 
I will not read 50 mascot things. So what I will do is I will put a flip chart there saying mascots, you have a column lost, a column found, and like a prize thing, OK? And then you just fight over there, OK? Uh, for putting up the mascot, I, I do uh, want like a percentage of the uh, price to Commission. be paid. Huh? Commission, yes, thank you. Okay. But now we have time, so stolen mascot questions, just raise your card. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any more questions? No? Oh, you, you, you know there's no dinner yet. Okay, to him, technical. Uh, Federico from Turin, can the Uppsala delegate go to P? What? Yeah. He was speaking about it uh, all the time. You need to pee. Is that it? Like, <laughs> I think there will be more questions coming now. <laughs> okay, come on. No more questions. Tallinn, you had a question? Yes, Tallinn has a question. <laughs> Who wants to kill Tallinn now? <laughs> no. But to be honest, I really want rule from Tallinn. Uh, Yes. So that maybe we can like that's bullshit because at uh, the free time we have really awesome swimming pool here and maybe we can go and do some training or something like that. So if you have that half an hour when we maybe we can uh, use it more useful. Thank you. Or you can ask more questions. Okay. So um, we have a break now till 9:20. Be back here and the. People go first now is this half of the plenary. I first try to go to dinner. Um, and then we can safely close the session. <laughs> Unless there are questions, of course. OK. Uh, is this one? I suppose you know what you're doing. <laughs> okay, that's good. Rehearsing. Yes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>